Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And before we get rolling with this video, I just want to real quick cover the four firearms safety rules beforehand. I just feel compelled to do that because this is an uh, intro video. And in an intro video, it's for people who are, of course, new to guns. And so you may or may not know the four firearms safety rules. This deserves its own video, which I will do at some point. But for right now, just so we're all on the same page, I want to give the four firearms safety rules. The first firearm safety rule is treat all guns as if they're loaded, or all guns are always loaded. Which means we're never going to do anything with a unloaded gun that we wouldn't do with a loaded gun. So the word should never, never come out of your mouth. It's okay, Dylan. It's not loaded. Uh, you shouldn't say that, okay? That means we're not going to point the gun at ourselves. We're not going to point at someone else. We're just going to treat that gun like it's loaded all the time. If we all just did that, no firearms accidents would ever happen. The next three rules are derivations or an explanation of, I guess, the first firearm safety rule. So the first firearm safety rule, treat all guns as if they're loaded or all guns are always loaded. The second firearm safety rule is... Never point your gun at anything you're not willing to destroy. Which means I'm not going to point the gun at you, I'm not going to point it at myself, I'm not going to point the gun at anything that I am not willing to destroy. Uh, I always picture that there is a laser coming out of the end of that muzzle, and I don't want to laser anything that I'm not willing to destroy. So I want to be very careful where I point this muzzle. That's particularly important on handguns because it's such a short muzzle, and the slightest turn of your wrist can sweep large swaths of area with that pistol. We want to be very careful where we point that. Uh, the third rule is keep your finger straight and off the trigger. This is where your finger goes on all guns. Pistol, rifle, shotgun, doesn't matter. This is where it goes. It does not go here. Right? We don't rest our finger there. We rest our finger here outside of the trigger guard. We want to keep our finger straight and off the trigger until we're ready to fire. The fourth rule is be sure of your target, its foreground and its background, so that if you pull your gun out to save your life, uh, you want to know what's between you and the bad guy and what's beyond the bad guy. So it's important to know where else could your bullet go in the event that it doesn't go where you want it to. So those are the four firearm safety rules. That's very quick. Like I said, that deserves its own video, which we'll do at some point. However, that is your intro. So as you watch these videos about firearms and, and handling firearms, I want you to keep those four rules in mind all the time, and we're never going to break those. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher with Citadel Defense, <clears throat> and today we're going to go over just the basics of the AR-15 and its mechanical components. How do, you, how do the actual mechanical components of this gun work, and what are all these buttons and switches? I'm making this video because uh, there's a lot of people right now, and uh, several of which are my friends, who are buying guns for the first time, and maybe they're buying a rifle, <clears throat> and they just don't know what the buttons and the switches on this gun do and what they are. And so this is just a mechanics video. This is not a how to shoot it video. This is not a how you operate the gun video. This is a how the gun operates video. So this is a video about the gun itself. So if you've been shooting AR-15s for a while and you already know this, this isn't a video for you. But if you have someone in your life who's just never seen one or never shot one or just got one and wants to know how the actual mechanics of the gun itself work, that's what this video is about. So, we will start by making sure that the gun is, of course, unloaded. Because if you're going to be working with a gun and you don't want it to be loaded, then you better be sure that it's unloaded. So, the way you do that is, <clears throat> this part here, this is called the magazine. Mine just has a fancy little design on it. Magazine holds bullets. It's what feeds the bullets into the gun. And that part is removable. This button right here, we call it the mag release. When we press, when we press that button it's going to release the magazine and the magazine's going to come out. And as you can see, of course, there are bullets in a magazine because an unloaded magazine is worthless. So now that we have the magazine out of the gun, we're going to want to make sure that the chamber itself is empty. And the way we do that is we're going to retract the charging handle. So this handle right here, this is called the charging handle. What we're going to do is we're going to pull that sharply to the rear. Okay. Now, we can cycle it a couple times. That works, but as you see, when I cycle that charging handle, what it does here is it cycles the bolt out of the way, right? Everybody can see that moving. Now, if there was a round in here, it would be located in here in the, nope, it's hard to do on camera, in the chamber. That's where the round would be located. Uh, and cycling a couple times, of course, would remove the round. What we're going to do is we're going to lock the bolt to the rear. We'll talk about how to do that later. And then we are going to inspect the chamber. I can see in here, you probably can see right about there, there is nothing in the chamber 
Let's just use a little bit of light and hopefully you can see that there's no bullet in there. Okay, so the gun is unloaded. We want to always make sure the gun's unloaded when we want it to be. When we want it loaded, we of course want it loaded. Okay, so we're just going to start at one end of the gun and work to the other. Uh, all guns, of course, are going to come with a stock, <laughs> obviously, or maybe not obvious, but they should. Most of the uh, stocks on Air 15s these days are adjustable. So you can push this little button right here that I'm depressing, and then you can adjust the stock to a length. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to measure the distance between the end of your hand all the way to your elbow. Right here, you want to put that stock in your elbow, and you want to hold the pistol grip like this, and that's how you're going to adjust that stock is what's the difference here. So that right there would be a stock adjusted for me, assuming I'm not wearing plates or armor or anything like that. Okay, that's the stock. <clears throat> this thing right here, this is called a forward assist. No one ever uses that. They don't need to be on the gun at all. But what that does is, if you needed to close your bolt a little bit further, you could push the forward assist in order to assist in closing the bolt. Again, go ahead and forget about that thing. It's never used. You're really not going to need it. This here is a safety. Okay, now on this gun, it's an ambidextrous safety, which means it's on both sides of the gun. A lot of guns will not have ambidextrous safeties, and that's just fine. You don't need it. What you do need to know, though, is that when it is parallel to the ground, the gun is unsafe. When it's perpendicular to the ground, the gun is on fire. What that means then is safe means the trigger cannot be pulled when its gun is on safe. And when it's on fire, if I were to pull the trigger, the gun could fire, assuming it was loaded. This gun is not, like we talked about earlier. So on my particular gun here, I have this fancy lever. Ignore that. You don't really need to know anything about that. It's not a big deal. But what you have here is a bolt catch, bolt release. So when I depress the bottom of the bolt catch and I pull the charging handle back, that is what locks the bolt to the rear, as we discussed earlier. As you can see, the bolt is retracted. Then if I were to push, push the top of that button, it will, of course, release the bolt. So if I were to push the top right here and the bolt release, it's going to close that bolt on the gun. As you can see, the bolt is now closed. The bolt, <coughs> the bolt is the part of the gun. I will take this gun apart a little bit later and demonstrate this to you. But the bolt travels all the way down the buffer tube and all the way back up each time the gun is fired. So the bolt is what's going to... <coughs> the bolt of the gun, and I'll take the gun apart here later and show this to you, but the bolt travels all the way down the buffer tube and then all the way forward. It picks up rounds off the magazine and seats them in the chamber. It also houses the firing pin, which is going to fire the rounds and the mag release, which we already talked about, which releases the magazine. So the way you hold this, and this will be a second video, but when your firing hand rides here on the weapon, your thumb rides on the safety, you can manage the bolt release from this side with your forefinger, and then you'll end up managing the bolt release, the bolt catch, with your support hand, which is your other hand. We'll talk about that later. Now, different weapons are going to come with different kind of forends, and that's fine, not a really big deal. Some Sometimes you have a little fancy grip up here, sometimes you won't, sometimes these will be skinnier, sometimes they'll be a little fatter. What matters is at the end of the day, it's going to come down to a front sight here of some kind, either a big A2 sight that comes with the gun, those big like triangle metal ones if you bought a more standard AR, or you might have some kind of flip up sight option as is on this particular one. And then of course you have a rear sight. Rear sights can fold up and fold down. Not a big deal. These can be adjusted. These sights can be adjusted. If I manipulate and were to turn this dial right here, I could move the sight either right or left to adjust for windage. For me, on this gun, I keep that fold down out of the way because I run a red dot sight. Not something that's needed on a gun, but certainly makes your life a lot easier. The front sight, you'll need a front sight tool. Uh, which you can find on Amazon for like eight or nine bucks. But what that goes on is that allows me to turn the front sight and either decrease its height or increase its height to adjust for elevation in my shooting. Just a side note, two things that you absolutely should have on your rifle is a sling, either a two point or a single point. I'm usually a single point guy. Uh, the vast majority of people run a two point sling, which means it's connected to the gun on two points. Go ahead and buy yourself a two point sling if you're new, not a big deal. The other thing that you should absolutely get on your rifle is a white light. Okay, It's very nice to be able to have a white light. This happens to be a surefire light, but there are different kinds out there. You need to be able to see what you're shooting at, particularly at night. Now, this is not a video on how to clean the AR-15, uh, which ends up being pretty simple. However, to field strip this gun, so again, you understand the mechanics of it, there are two pins located right here. 
There's one pin located right here, and the other pin is located right here. Uh, what we can do is we can push this pin into the gun, and then I'm going to roll the gun around, I'm going to finish pulling that pin out. At that point, the gun will break into two pieces here. And it's just hinging on the other pin, which I can also remove if I need to do. And then this could come away in two separate parts entirely. When we do that, we can pull out the charging handle and the bolt, as we discussed earlier. So here's the bolt that can come out of your gun. And then here is the charging handle that can also come out of your gun. For lubing this gun, what you really need to know is soak the bolt carrier group. That's this piece in lube everywhere and it'll run just fine. Air 15s like to run wet. There's some debate about that, and some people say you should only lube certain parts of it or whatever. I just keep mine filthy wet and let it roll. To reassemble it, of course, you're gonna replace the charging handle, then you're gonna feed your bolt carrier group back inside. Then you can close the hinge. And finally, we can push that pin back into place. At that point, we'll do a functions check. Weapon cycle's fine. There was happen the weapon is reassembled. So that's the basic mechanics of the AR-15. The weapon itself is pretty simple. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of familiarity to handle. Uh, but basically, the main controls that you're going to be concerned with, as we mentioned, are that bolt catch, bolt release, the safety, you need to know how to work that really well, and of course, the mag release. Last but not least, of course, is the trigger, although I think most of you can figure that part out for yourself. We'll try to do another video on how you're going to hold, operate, and shoot this weapon, but that is the mechanics of the weapon itself. Do brave deeds and endure.